So I've had a couple people reach out asking for a full quant crawler tutorial and exactly how to use it. So I figured tonight's as good a night as any to go through and break down exactly how I use it, how I built it to be used, and the way you get the best results out of quant crawler itself. So let's hop into the charts. I'll show you exactly what I do so you can replicate it. So as what we established the other day actually in our live chat is when you are in quant crawler, uploading charts, you need to have these as clean as possible. So we found that it was actually pulling information from these, but it wasn't actually looking at anything here related. It was actually pulling the wrong information over here, which was leading to incorrect output and analysis. So when these were on here and getting entered in, they were quant crawler. Sometimes when it was pulling data would pull from like 4141. If you look here at the blue line, this is actually the VWAP right here. So the more that was over here highlighted, the more room for error. So we found if you just simply hide these for a minute while you're uploading charts and then take your screenshots, you can get them going. So if you haven't been to quantcrawler.com, you can start a free trial. It's free for 30 days, $9.99 a month. After that, $10. Cancel any time. We tried to keep it cheap and affordable. If you want to learn more, you just click here. It'll bring you down. You can break it down, watch a video. But you're here watching this, you're most likely already a member, click here, it will bring you to your login screen. And then all you need to do is log in, click yes, I agree. And then you are here in quant crawler. So once you're logged in, you need to come back over here to your chart. And again, I hide all of this, I try to make the charts as clean as possible. So we're looking at the one minute, five minute and 15 minute because quant crawler right here is asking for the one minute, five minute and 15 minutes so it can start running its algorithms and doing its thing. So right here is what I like to do with the one minute is I scroll back just a little bit to get as much in here as I can without having the candles really truncated. So if you went like this, you're not going to get, you can't see that with your eyes very well. So how do you expect the computer? I know it's far more advanced than us, but you're not going to get very exact details if you're scrunching everything like this and saying, here's my one minute. So I personally have always used it about this enough to where you can see the candle wicks, the highs and the lows for each one minute. And then you just go to the camera, click copy image and paste it in. You do this for the five minute and the 15 minute. On the five minute, in case you guys didn't know this, this is just general charting stuff. Wherever your mouse is, if you hold the control button, you can zoom in on that exact point. So you can zoom out on that point, all that. So if you wanna be here, go down a little bit. You then can come off to the right hand side where the price is, you see your double arrows. You can scroll here and dial in your chart a little bit, zoom out a little more. Get as much as you can in here I'd maybe even try and get this part right here as well because this encompasses the whole day so i position my chart like that and then i paste that one i do the exact same thing for the 15 minutes so leave it here maybe truncate the pricing down a little and just try and get as much as i can so then i upload that and that's all i do and then you run it through quant crawler is going to go and do its thing so it's going to start breaking everything down and you can see here it says current price 4147 and the entry point is 4135. Now, I do want to say this. I switch back to the one minute here. A little bit of the human side has to come in here with how you trade. So going to 4135 is going to be a pretty heavy pullback in the Asia session gold. There's not going to be enough volume for that. If that was New York session, I would happily wait for this. But I'm doing this. You guys can see down here. It's 917 at night um, on day the 10th. There's not chances of this getting down to 4135 are pretty slim i think so on my side if i were actually going to enter this trade i'd probably be looking to enter somewhere like around here at this bottom pullback at the lowest point that it's been in like the last gosh i don't know hour or three somewhere in there i would just wait for a small pullback down into this range and i would enter you got to take a little bit of the human side this is a model that predicts things, that's its goal, but it doesn't mean you need to live exactly by this. So um, you follow it or make a little bit of your own decision on that. I never typically follow this entry price ever. Uh, me personally, um, I'm a little bit riskier of a trader, I think. So um, you can see here on your recommendation, and, and I actually read this. I don't just have this generate and then I'm like, okay, here's my price points, boom. But I legitimately, to make the best trades I can, I actually read through this. I, I know that may be hard to believe, but that's the only way you know exactly what's going on from what it can tell on what you uploaded. 
That's also why getting as much data as you can in one screenshot is insanely crucial because it's only going off what it can see. If you don't truncate it, like, let me just give you a quick example. I'll be fast. I know I can ramble sometimes, but like your chart looked like this right here and you upload this, you're going back to about 1800. So if my chart or yours looks like this and my chart looks like this right here, and I'm squeezing in all this extra data on the chart, I'm even going to truncate down a little bit, like we position it. I'm going all the way back to six o'clock this morning. Like I'm giving it a lot more to see trends and all of that versus you uploading a chart that looks like this and going, oh, this is far enough. And then taking your image and sending it. You want to utilize the space that you have to work with and give Quant Crawler everything it can to succeed. So then again, right here, contract specs, tick size 0.1 points, tick value $10. These are going to be really small because we're looking at full size GC, not MGC, but we did hard code in the main futures contracts. So GC, ES, NQ, I mean, we there's a lot in there. We may be missing some. So with that being said, if you guys run a chart that is not hard coded in to the TypeScript that we actually built out today, I say we, it was me building that out, it's going to tell you that it's going to go ping back to AI to confirm the tick size and tick value and correlate those together so it can then come up with your numbers. Now, with that being said, I have it on the back end where it automatically sends me an email letting me know so-and-so just tried to pull XYZ chart, track it for later. So then if I see a bunch of XYZ charts coming in, I'm going to know we need to add that in. I, of course, don't want to stop to always do the, the, you know, all the time updating the website for just one ticker. But if in any given week we get that there's like 10, 15, 20, we're certainly going to add it in. Um, like the one-offs, it's probably just going to let AI do its thing. It, it's too much for me to update every single one-off ticker. Um, then get down here. We now have three options that it gives you in the body. Option one for a single contract with a wider stop. On this scenario, it's not really going to apply because we're on full size GC. If you were on MGC, this would be a lot bigger, but your risk, your stop distance, your target distance, and then your entry stop and target. Um, it's for swing trades and volatile sessions. If you're doing this right here, it's probably better on MGC. For multiple contracts, I do like three tighter stops with a fixed risk. The $200 risk is not going to work on GC. It's just too big. Um, if you are a trader who does the full-size ES, NQ, GC, you're going to want to adjust the $200 risk. It defaults to this, and you can very easily fix that by just putting in the number you want to risk down here. We'll get to that at the bottom. Now, highly requested after it went away today was the chart structure. And we now have it identifying off the five minute support and resistance line. So off the five minute chart, it's going to break down where's the support, where's the resistance, and just kind of that zone so you can start to figure out your own entries. We put here, it's a pro trader favorite because every single person who has reached out to me for this one specifically has been trading for more than three years because I always like to find out a little bit about who's emailing me. And, uh, you know, not knocking anybody who's only been trading for two to three months, but people who have been trading for multiple years and want certain things, they're going to get this updated for what they're looking for. So it's actually beneficial for them. So this right here, stop distance is a pretty aggressive scalp uh, structure, higher win rate, but I'm only going two and a half points, pretty aggressive. It may be off on this. So maybe it's not liking something on the chart. Um, this is going to be for more advanced traders. This is where you want to target option three. If you're comfortable setting your own stop loss, take profit. Then you can see here on the time frame analysis, clear up trend, 15 minute, clear up trend, five minute momentum is showing a bullish turn on the one minute. They're all in alignment. Three of three overall bias is bullish. The key levels here from the five minute chart is 4135 and 4158. So let's just verify 4135 right here, which is kind of what we expected. And then 4138, excuse me, 4158, sorry, is up here in this range. So there's some support somewhere around here. It, it may be misread that. I, I think actually, sorry, some uh, resistance right around here at 4155. So again, that's the human side of it. Kind of got to make a couple plays on your own here. Um, we'll guide you and get you close, but you got to fine tune some stuff. Nothing's perfect. We're trying to be, but nothing is. So um, enter on a pullback to 4135 support zone. And the verdict action is long, confidence is high. Now, this obviously won't work on the full GC contract, like a 0.7 stop loss is crazy on three contracts. So is what you want to do down here is just say, I am risking $500. It's going to immediately update that. 
with what we've built. It doesn't even go reanalyze anything. It just simply updates the numbers so it makes more sense. So right here, 1.7 points, 3.4, or a five point stop to a 10 point take profit on option one. Um, nothing really changes here too much, but it is telling you the risk per contract is 250. Right there is a quick overview of how I use it, how you can use it, and actually looking and breaking down everything here on what it kicks out to your benefit, and hopefully it helps. We are going live daily for the most part um, and actually trading two accounts that are exclusively using Quant Crawler just to prove that this is profitable. And so far on three days trading, we're up $600 on two accounts, so $1,200 total, and it's working great. You can see us on the live multiple times a week, and they'll be pre-scheduled if you guys want to actually see it without doing it yourself.